families. So whenever you wish, you can start. Good afternoon. Uh, the topic that I'm going to talk uh, on is uh, very much related to my own uh, experience and um, activities. I'm talking about the internationalization of Addis Ababa University, and uh, I give this talk from capacity building and resource uh, diversification perspectives. Um, my presentation will have uh, uh, these four uh, or five areas. Uh, first, I would like to contextualize the internationalization of the university. Um, then I will give uh, the activity, the uh, definition of what we are doing, or the definition of internationalization. Um, then I will bring in uh, the capacity building and resource diversification perspectives. I'll take some uh, success story and then I'll talk about some challenges. Um, later on, my colleague also takes upon some dimension of this discussion. So in some places, I might not go very uh, into uh, uh, small details. Now, under what conditions um, are we doing internationalization? Um, okay. Um, as you know, internationalization generally is a uh, basic characteristics of, of the university. Uh, be it in Salamanca or in Addis Ababa or in other places, uh, University, uh, university always has an international dimension. Um, as you have seen, a uh, few of our colleagues have reported from Salamanca about Ethiopia, and that's an international perspective. Um, teachers are coming to the university from somewhere else. I mean, I think Salamanca is a good example. It's uh, an international perspective. Um, I think you speak uh, Spanish very much, but we speak English, for instance, in uh, Addis Ababa University, it's an international perspective. Um, we use books uh, that are um, printed somewhere else, and it's an international perspective. So a university by itself is, is very much international from its very beginning. So um, we are looking at what we are doing in the University of Addis. And particularly at this, at this moment in time, uh, we very much emphasize internationalization. One reason is um, global competitiveness to catch up what happens in, around the world. Uh, we are interacting very much, and this interaction is not dictated by a single university. So if, if we do not catch up, for instance, with these developments, we are going to be left behind. So uh, globalization brings uh, new knowledge. Addis University, as an African university, has to go on to uh, master these new developments. Um, it has to go to the creation of new, new knowledge also, uh, research. Um, you know, uh, the university has to also catch up with uh, how knowledge is transmitted, how we teach. I mean, particularly the rise of uh, new technologies, I mean, the internet or the um, uh, uh, other types of uh, electronic media which are uh, influencing uh, the teaching learning process have to be mastered. Um, I mean, again, uh, global competitiveness also affects universities in the organization of knowledge. For instance, uh, like you have been doing now, exchange programs, 
we have to do that. Without that, now our universe, our programs now uh, won't be um, competitive. It won't be uh, standardized uh, in what is going on around the world. Uh, training programs or harmonization or mutual recognition of um, qualifications, networking, all of these are um, impacting okay, how we organize knowledge. So Addis Ababa University as um, a national university in Ethiopia is very much concerned with this. Uh, internationalization and Addis Ababa University is also very much uh, driven by um, demands for national development. The university uh, in uh, Addis Ababa is very much uh, looked upon as a center for postgraduate beautification and research. Uh, the reason is that it is um, the oldest university. It's not as old as yours, like 800 years, but uh, it is relatively the country's oldest university. So the government has a lot of expectation from the university, so it has to uh, prepare itself from that perspective. Um, um, again, uh, another uh, issue which also drives uh, the university's international, internationalization program is the tension between national demands and the use capacity to fulfill those expectations. I mean, high level uh, development demands of the university, but the capacity of the university um, not to fully, not or having no capacity uh, to that expectation. Um, so internationalization emerges as uh, an alternative with which we can, uh, you know, argument our uh, our capacities, like in terms of teachers or in terms of uh, um, in terms of uh, supervisors or in terms of materials or laboratories. I mean, in many ways, internationalization is looked upon as one component to enhance the activities of the university. Um, Another issue that really supports the university is the, the reverse. Um, for instance, um, as I said, Addis Ababa University is the largest and experienced uh, university uh, in Ethiopia. That is by itself a relative advantage for uh, internationalization. It has a good record of research uh, that attracts um, other researchers uh, to come to work with the university. Um, relative in Ethiopia, it has a better infrastructure as well. I mean, um, it has libraries, it has laboratories, uh, it has uh, museums, it has uh, staff members, and all these are contributing for uh, the internationalization uh, in the university. So these are, cons uh, I mean, um, uh, contextual issues under which internationalization is is. Uh, taking place in Ethiopia today, or particularly in Addis Ababa University, sorry. Now, when we talk about internationalization as a concept in this sense, then it involves the policy of the university and its efforts um, to build the capacity of the university to meet contextual pressures that I was talking about, and national development issues, globalization issues, um, so these are, uh, you know, these policies are more or less driven by these pressures, and the university is trying to respond to these pressures. Uh, for instance, the type of internationalization, okay, uh, that we are uh, focusing on, expansion of access, uh, uh, the, uh, in other words, uh, the expansion of uh, programs in the university particularly uh, postgraduate programs and, um, and research, or research, pro uh, research training programs, or PhD programs, and upgrading of uh, these programs as well. I mean, this is one way, upgrading in a way, uh, in addition to expanding programs, for instance, there is a need also to keep their standards. So this is um, one way of, of um, internationalization. Um, the second is, for instance, the staff and the students exchange. One way to upgrade the uh, quality of the programs uh, in Addis Ababa is through academic staff exchange. There is also staff exchange, uh, sorry, uh, student exchange, where 
giving opportunities for students to uh, go to uh, different universities, to use laboratories, to um, participate in seminars, and uh, to uh, take part in um, conferences, or use either um, I mean different libraries. These are uh, one of the dimensions through which uh, internationalization takes place. Um, research. I mean, there are several um, uh, uh, research um, uh, activities that are taking place in the university. Uh, sometimes these research activities are taking place at the, at the university, but also they are taking place in collaboration with other, uh, other researchers, other universities. So research is another dimension uh, with which the university is um, is involved in internationalization. Um, sharing materials, facilities, journals, references, these are other aspects uh, with which we internationalize, we share, uh, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, capacities that exist um, in different countries. Um, for instance, I know very well for, uh, that um, with Spain, uh, there is an Academy of Sciences in Madrid where uh, our students, uh, PhD students, come to um, use laboratories, for instance, um, and uh, where they come to use uh, libraries. So uh, this is also uh, one aspect uh, uh, around which we organize ourselves to get advantage of international forces. Um, Internationalization also takes place uh, in uh, the organization of learning, how learning um, is organized. Um, for instance, this morning we have been, we have been uh, learning about quality assurance uh, from uh, Salamanca University. Um, in other places, other types of uh, benchmarking activities are taking place in how um, courses are arranged, uh, credit hours, or um, the number of hours uh, a program takes place uh, is arranged, um, how different type of assessments um, are taking place is also benchmarked. And we do, um, we do, or other friends are coming for visits for assessments, a number of things are taking place. So these are some of the areas in which we are involved in internationalization. It's not just a few of these things, there are very many things, but really the most important things are um, these areas. Um, now, if you look at the aim of internationalization in Addis, uh, well, there can be different interpretations, but I looked at uh, this internationalization activities from two angles. One is the um, uh, building partnerships or the capacity building uh, perspective. Second, uh, the resource mobilization and the diversification perspective. Um, partnerships, uh, which aim really in general to build the capacity of the university, um, are taking place in different ways, at different levels. For instance, there is an expanding inter-university relationship, where the university is, is um, um, creating uh, uh, partnerships with different universities and uh, uh, colleges or institutions in different countries. Uh, the second uh, uh, partnership activity has to do with creating university government relationship. The university does not uh, uh, connect itself only with uh, uh, with uh, um, other universities, but it has also uh, relationships with different governments. Um, the third is, uh, for instance, university business relationships. University and different international institutions, businesses are also having this relationship. So we have uh, more or less these three dimensions of relations with, um, with different universities uh, or um, relationships with, uh, in internationalization, to say so. The second is resource mobilization and diversification. I mean, the very clear thing is this. Uh, 
I think here is the basic idea. Uh, Addis Ababa University, as the largest institution in the country, um, receives um, uh, a very good support from government I mean, in terms of um, finance or other things. But it is very clear that this uh, is not enough by itself. It's clear that there should be an alternative. It should, it's very clear that there should be uh, uh, a support, a more uh, diversified uh, type of support to the university. Uh, the reasons are clear, the university is expanding, the university is um, uh, having different programs. Even if you keep the programs uh, as they are, I mean as they were even 10 years ago, um, the situation is, is changing, so we need to uh, argument to, to uh, support this, uh, uh, I mean, um, um, singular source of, of support for the university. So, due to that, uh, alternative uh, sources are uh, uh, being sold. So, the main message here is uh, search for multiple friends, donors, and supporters. That's the, the most important activity that's, that is taking place here. Now, when you look at partnerships, we see that Addis Ababa University has established partnerships with so many institutions. Now, 52 universities in Europe uh, are our partners. 31 universities in North America are our partners. 18 universities in Africa, and nine universities in Asia. I mean, um, these are, um, not a total list to say so, but these are the ones that really we have very clearly. Now, this shows that, um, unlike yesterday's presentation, it shows that um, uh, in a university uh, in Addis is having really an active type of uh, relationships and, uh, and the partnerships with different continents, almost like one, two, three, four. I mean, it's. Um, uh, the large list of relationships that we have. Uh, with Spain, I think, with Spain, if you look at uh, this relationship in Spain, we have uh, relationships with uh, Salamanca, where we are now, with Seville, Barcelona, Granada, and the Academy of Sciences in Madrid. So these are like five institutions that are involved in uh, relationships with uh, this university. Uh, now, uh, Addis Ababa University relationships with governments, with governments. I said that um, we are not related only, or we are not having partnerships uh, only with universities, but there are government relationships with Addis Ababa University. Um, for instance, Addis Ababa University has, uh, by the way, uh, government relationships are expressed. Uh, through bilateral development agencies, bilateral development agencies. So, for instance, Addis Ababa University is related with SIDA, Swedish International Development Agency. So, SIDA is supporting Addis Ababa University by representing Swedish government. Uh, with Norwegian uh, International Development Agency, there is um, a relationship for a long time, uh, but the, there is now um, uh, a plan uh, to revisit uh, and to make it uh, a better relationship with, with Norway. Um, the German academic uh, exchange, for instance, DART, the one that we call DART, is, uh, is having a partnership with the Ansar University. Uh, Spanish development, uh, development Agency, very recently we have uh, a growing uh, relationship with the Spanish Development Agency. This project, the one with which uh, the delegation from Addis uh, came to Salamanca, is one of the um, uh, projects that the Spanish uh, International Development uh, uh, Agency supporting Addis Ababa University. But there are others. Uh, we have uh, projects with the um, medical faculty. We have uh, projects with the National uh, Natural Science faculty. So there are others with uh, Addis Ababa University through uh, the Spanish development agents. So there are different relationships that we have with governments. Um, if you look at SIDA, Swedish International Development Agency, 
the most important focus is on doctoral programs. They support doctoral programs. Uh, Nora in the Spanish uh, development agencies are supporting research very much. Um, that human capacity building, Germany for instance, different types of training programs are given. Um, I think one of the experiences that we have is our deals with, uh, with uh, international business groups. In fact, there are local business groups, but also we have an international uh, business uh, having a relationship uh, with us. Uh, a Japanese company, as you know, the Mitsubishi Corporation, for instance, provide uh, scholarships for, for students. Um, there is an Ethiopian-Turkish uh, company uh, which has a relationship with, uh, with uh, our university. Uh, we are training uh, teachers for these schools and they are also uh, sharing facilities, proposed at least to share facilities uh, with our university. Uh, they want to give, uh, they have uh, um, access uh, facilities for, for themselves that they build, so they are willing to share them with our uh, students who deserve uh, to get those type of support. Um, uh, there is an Indian company which is now just coming to Ethiopia. Um, it's a huge uh, conglomerate of uh, small companies. Uh, it has proposed to, for instance, establish new disciplines and departments at the university, particularly in the field of technology. Um, they are interested to give scholarships for students. Um, so uh, we are dealing with, but this is a business group. It's not a government, but it's a business group. Um, Microsoft has also shown some uh, interest uh, with, in supporting the computerization of uh, Addis Ababa University. But there is also a free telecom, which is interesting, which is interested to support uh, research on efficient telecommunication uh, administration. So this type is really a new type of internationalization, but still, uh, but still, um, um, companies are showing interest to uh, work with Addis Ababa University. Um, now, uh, resource, uh, resource diversification. As I say, the main idea behind resource diversification, resource mobilization, uh, is to acquire more resources because uh, we know that uh, the resource that we get from the public service, from the public sector alone, is not enough to support the expanding uh, university. It's not, um, even if the university does not expand due to inflation, due to the uh, expenses that are increasing from time to time, they cannot support and sustain the university as it is. So, to have a different type of resource mobilization and to diversify sources for uh, acquiring it are becoming very pressing now. It's very important to generate income. So, um, we have uh, different mechanisms. Uh, fundraising is one activity. Fundraising. Um, uh, we have a unit where uh, fundraising is being planned. So far, it has not uh, started really uh, very strongly, but there is a huge, huge push uh, to organize events, uh, both inside Ethiopia and outside Ethiopia, where we can raise funds for a different, um, uh, uh, different needs of the university. There are very many needs, there are many uh, deficiencies. So in order to uh, uh, make these activities function, I think we are, uh, we are looking for uh, uh, some funds and fundraising events are one of the areas that we are looking for in order to uh, uh, generate income. Uh, another area where we are emphasizing is on endowments and a, a gift uh, solicitation from donors again. In addition to raising funds from different uh, sources, uh, we are also looking for endowments for uh, solicitation of, of um, um, uh, uh, gifts. Uh, these are different properties. It can be in terms of um, really physical pro physical property. It can be in terms of money. It can be in, in different ways. 
uh, we would like to have uh, or we would like to uh, get some some of these activities uh, done in Addis Ababa University. This is the second strategy. I don't know how it is in uh, in Salamanca. Maybe you must, you must have as an old university some endowments, um, maybe land or factory or anything that has been given to the university from its uh, establishment. Um, we are also interested to work with uh, our alumni, uh, former students of the university, and also to get inputs uh, from the diaspora. Diaspora, in this sense, is Ethiopians who are living abroad, um, who have been uh, students of the university, but also we are, we are not excluding those who are, who are willing to support the University of Addis, uh, in this sense. Um, now, for instance, if you look at the fund and the endowment activities, I mean, we have uh, projects, for instance, like about 45 uh, projects have been uh, recently uh, uh, identified, and at least, uh, at least gets money in this sense. Um, as I said, we couldn't organize uh, international or national uh, fundraising events. Uh, by itself, it is complex. I mean, it's not an easy uh, task. So uh, we are uh, um, looking forward to uh, raise funds in this sense. Um, also, in this in fundraising and endowments, one of the most important things that we are looking for is the donors meeting. Um, as uh, I said, I mean, one source is not uh, a good formula that we are looking for. So we would like to diversify our sources and uh, we are planning to call for a donor's meeting. And we expect that different type of donors will be invited to this, uh, to this event, particularly um, uh, international foundations uh, or uh, multilateral institutions, bilateral institutions uh, are expected uh, to attend this uh, meeting. And we are looking for uh, any type of pitch that they are going to make for us. Um, of course, uh, we would like to also uh, organize uh, an endowment fund, an institution that is going to um, coordinate the uh, solicitation, reception of uh, uh, endowment funds. So this is also another uh, area where uh, at least uh, there has been a preparation. So far it's not functioning. Um, as I said, uh, Addis Ababa University has been in operation for nearly 50 years and it has very uh, many former graduates. I mean, uh, the most important leaders of the country or if not in the opposition or if in the international arena, they are uh, products of Addis Ababa University. So we are expecting that this alumni will work with the university um, in order to uh, support uh, some of uh, the, the university efforts. Um, the diaspora, uh, I don't know how many people are living in Spain from Ethiopia, but we know that there are very, very many Ethiopians living abroad. Uh, most of uh, these people are well educated and they are professionals. They are willing to support the institution. So, so far we have not been able to tap this uh, rich resource uh, uh, to uh, our advantage. So, we are uh, planning also to work with the diaspora. Um, of course, uh, we have, over the last uh, years, we are struggling to create a database because the diaspora and the alumni are living in different countries, working in different areas. So to, to create a database has been one of our activities really in here. Um, but we would be interested to form their association in um, Ethiopia and uh, as well as elsewhere, and also uh, sort of chapters in different countries so that, so that they can connect us with these with, um, this Ethiopians. Um, now I'll talk to about the a success story, if we call it a success story, really, in internationalization. Um, one cannot undermine 
the uh, contribution that uh, internationalization would have in in, in a university life. I think um, this is true for Salamanca, it's true for other universities, but it's very much true for Addis Ababa University. Now, one interesting uh, example is the Addis Ababa University and the CEDA relationship or Swedish International Development Authority uh, support. Um, over the last uh, years, um, Addis Ababa University has been uh, very much focusing on expanding um, masters and the PhD programs. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, my colleague will later on present this, uh, but we have nearly um, 67 PhD programs. Uh, we have more than 200 master's programs. And the university is very large, like 50,000 students are uh, there. Um, Postgraduate programs together with PhD programs uh, alone uh, enroll like 12,000 students, and it's a large university, really. So, uh, with this huge movement towards expansion, uh, there isn't really uh, enough, m enough resources, money. Money is just one thing, but also expertise. And, you know, to run a PhD program, you need uh, professors, you need laboratories, you need a number of things. We were not that we were ready for this. Even if we were ready, it's not adequate. So, um, the one country or uh, institution that came to our support is CEDA, the Swedish International Development Agencies, uh, Agency. And this agency has been supporting Addis Ababa University unilaterally for over the last 10 to 15 years. And a lot of money has been uh, given. With this money, we uh, invite professors, we send our students to uh, different seminars and uh, conferences, to lab libraries, laboratories. Um, and um, I think uh, it is possible to say that without this support, this expanding, hugely expanding PhD and master's program would not have been uh, successful as it is. So this is a success story where um, a university, a single university, cooperates with, uh, uh, with um, uh, a government authority, bilateral uh, government agency, uh, to make programs a success. I think we have, well, there is no question that in any relationships there are ups and downs, but over all these years, uh, CIDA has been supporting our program, and I, I look at it as a very successful uh, uh, collaboration between these countries. Um, well, internationalization has its own challenge, no question about it. I mean, nothing um, is working as such in a smooth way. Uh, for instance, uh, we have many relationships with, as I said, with many uh, universities, but some are not active. I mean, some are partially active, we work with some, on some of them, uh, but in others they are inactive. So uh, this is a challenge by itself. How you know you we, for instance, um, sign agreements uh, with universities, but how to implement uh, those activities uh, fully or partially is a challenge by itself. A huge challenge. Um, Another, uh, I think, problem, uh, problem that we have faced is um, the shortage of resources on AU side to initiate its own links. Mostly, what's interesting is mostly Addis Ababa University establishes its relationships when other universities come to its campus to seek this type of relationships, normally. Um, Chinese universities are coming, or Korean universities, European or American, they are asking us to establish relationships with them. But we couldn't do the reverse. I mean, Arts University is not just now in a position to go to Spain or to America or to Europe or Asia to create 
relationships with universities that it thinks are useful to its programs. So this is one of the challenges that we have. Um, well, we don't have also capacity. I mean, those of you who came to uh, our university uh, must have observed this. We are not well organized, we are not really um, advanced in, um, in running international programs, in planning international programs, in uh, implementing international programs. So now there is a restructuring process in the university. We hope that this uh, um, program, this program will be um, um, carefully uh, considered and uh, a good type of institutional capacity for internationalization will be created. Um, so these are some of the issues that I've been facing over the last two years. And um, uh, finally, I would say that uh, it is internationalization that has brought us also to Salamanca. And um, uh, as a university, we take it seriously and to work with other universities and hope uh, uh, relationships would continue to grow. Uh, thank you very much. We are going to make a break of 10 minutes because it's been a long afternoon. So thank you, Dr. Pisale. Thank you, Dr. Pisale.